How to actually make a living from your blog. Huge misconception. You need a crap ton of traffic to make a living online. You don't. You just need the right traffic. I first started way back in 1998 and was making a full time living from my website by 2004. Well, I say a living. But it was more like surviving. Anyway, here's what I wish someone told me back then. It would have saved me years of trial and error. Here's the thing. Traffic intent is everything. Are your visitors looking for educational content that helps them to solve a very specific problem? Will they eventually be willing to pay for a comprehensive solution? Okay. You might know know that right now. So let's validate it. Real quick. Just open a new tab. Head over to Amazon. Are there any books in the same niche as your blog? Are people leaving verified reviews for those books? Great. You now know there's a large group of people with money to spend. So how do you get these folks to visit your blog? Create content based around the right keywords. So your stuff gets ranked and seen. That means staying the hell away from competitive key phrases. Stick to around 1. 000 searches per month. More or less. How do you find that info? SE Rush. Keyword Surfer. Uber Suggest. All have free options. You might get mixed results. That's okay you just want a rough idea. Okay so now you've got the right type of traffic coming to your blog. How do you make money from it? You've probably heard AdSense is the way to go. Nope. With that you really do need a crap ton of traffic. Because we're targeting people with a problem to solve. It makes life a lot easier for us. And more profitable. But the traffic is still cold. People rarely buy stuff just because a review or a banner on some random blog told them to. They consider the source. They don't know you and they don't trust you yet. So you need to warm them up. The best way to earn their trust is to give them more free stuff that will help them. Ask them to join your email list in exchange for an extra piece of content. This should be quick and easy to consume. Something to help move them further along their journey without bogging them down or creating overwhelm. Since they're on your email list, you can continue the conversation, deliver more value, build more trust and increase the desire for a comprehensive solution. Now they have a reason to listen to you, your opinion, advice and recommendations. This is where you really make your money. When you suggest they buy product X, your conversions will be a hell of a lot greater than just putting banner ads in front of cold traffic. Where do you get products to sell? Recommend other people's products and earn an affiliate commission or make your own. I've done it both ways and it all works pretty much the same. The monetization method is just a cog in the machine, albeit a very important one. And this system can and should be automated. Now you don't have to rely on CPM earnings or need lots of traffic to make money. Happy to answer any questions please don't inbox me. Ask publicly so everyone else can benefit. 1. Your post is very inspiring. 2. I work as a social media manager for a fashion startup. 3. We already have 100k followers on Instagram but it's based in India so it's easier than getting 100k somewhere in the west but still not very very easy. 4. What kind of blogs could I write slash get written that would eventually lead to sales of clothes for women? 5. It's fast fashion for now but we are also going to concentrate on high ticket Indian ethnic wear once the Rona is done with. If you don't mind me asking, how long did it take you to go from? say 10k to 100k followers and what was the process you followed what's the engagement rate like especially these days are you noticing a big change positive or negative one a considerably long time 
we were not aiming for 100k followers cause the sales were always steady and we had fewer but higher quality outfits so the posts were few and far between. 2. I have noticed a very very direct in not less than 50 to 60 cases correlation between no of posts and follower count for fashion related pages. As long as the content is not a poorly made be unprofessional see on topic. 3. We did not follow that approach so it took us way longer but it did not impact the sales. 4. But we are changing the strategy now after the Rona is done with. We will follow the minimum 2 high quality posts a day rule, increasing our collaboration with smaller influencers. 5. Why we decided to change the strategy is to check how much lower our ROAS gets with higher follower count. 6. Our engagement hasn't dropped much at all. I'd even say it's the same as before. But because of the lockdown here we are not allowed to dispatch orders. So we have stopped accepting orders. I can't comment if the sales will go back to usual when the lockdown is lifted or not. Your writing is much better than mine. Congrats. P. I read somewhere that the worst thing you can do is make your readers read something they already know and this is all kind of regurgitated stuff but. With that being said. It's really solid advice. And it's all consolidated really well instead of feeding people the information in chunks or making them seek out each tidbit individually. So overall great post. I have a website that makes 250 to 300 month with 40 to 50 users a month. Traffic comes from very specific on topic websites. E. G questions and answers sites. So yes. Traffic is irrelevant. Now how hard do I get those 40 to 50 users? Extremely hard compared with other websites where I write a 1000k word post and I get that amount of traffic in one month organically soon after posting. But it brings me one not 300. Traffic comes from very specific on topic websites what do you mean by that? Love it. Really good advice. Thanks for sharing. A lot of people forget that we humans want to get to know the author for credibility. In modern marketing you have to give often and then later in the process ask for something. This is the persuasion of email marketing. And this is how it is practiced, because it works. This way you gain so much more. And I am not talking about money. One should start a blog and talk about it because of a desire. Because of a hobby or an interest in the topic. This way it also sparks joy. Money is one thing but passion and the medium are more important to get the attention. Well. Next to execution of course. With your clear advice. Even people who are new to marketing could start a side business. But it takes time and dedication. The specifics matter enormously. So many people are immersed in the idea of becoming viral. The intensely commercial emphasis of the WWW content producers the noisiest has created the false belief among multitudes of people that this is what they must do. First and foremost you need to be genuinely specific. You cannot build a long-term project out of good intentions. And the desire to succeed. If you have arrived at the point of identifying a very specific subject slash industry slash nuanced niche you then need to present a subject driven publication which allows you to create your media platform. The problem as I am seeing it. Is that a huge number of people do not understand what blogging actually is. The word has become meaningless. Rolling Stone magazine is a blog. New York Post is a blog. Reader's Digest is a blog. Incidentally all of these sites are built from WordPress. Today blogging is mass media. It is not about producing reams of mediocre posts to try and seduce the Google crawlers. Getting freelance writers to mass produce rubbish at 6 cents per word. The sophistication of web publishing has moved along. We need to open our minds and expand our vision. Begin with one aspect of your chosen direction and offer something tangible for those people. We cannot create an entire blog fully formed. It has to be built and developed over time. Time is another aspect. 
people lose hope and energy if their project does not immediately produce results. It takes time, diligence, creative vision, and lots of work. There are no easy shortcuts. Apologies if I've made any spelling or grammatical errors. I'm thick as pig speep. This comment the style sounds like you are a fellow Aussie. Irish. Living in the UK. G day. I really like this post. Thank you. What about the competition in some niche? How important is it not to have many similar blogs? There are no original areas. It is a question of presenting your unique take. And your experience. Each specific niche has its own range of nuances. Distinctive characteristics. What you present will be different to another exponent of your field. I will publish some content along this direction. Thanks for the idea. Love this post. Blog is a great way to build trust. Then concert to leads. Never saw it that way. Could you see this applying to some sort of local news slash stories blog? I've had the idea for a while and I've got great content. I just haven't ever imagined it as monetizable. Where did you learn SEO? Learned it while working for an SEO firm in the 90s. I was a web designer and learned it on the job. But it was before Google existed. Back then it was mostly about stuffing porn keywords into meta tags. As crazy as it sounds. And hoping Yahoo, AltaVista or Lycos would rank it. Love this post. This is great. Thank you. What are you referring to exactly when you say? And this system can and should be automated. Nice one. I should have explained that in a bit more detail. Here's some copy pasta from when someone else asked. I'm using Kartra to automate it. You don't have to though. There are plenty of free options out there so you don't have to invest anything until you know you're going to see a return. The autoresponder is the core engine. So it just runs 24-7 with a little maintenance every now and then. Thanks a lot for your post. Really well written. I have a question. What role does social media play in blogging in order to increase traffic? Do you use social media? Yes absolutely. We can repurpose content for specific social media platforms. For example, if we read a blog post on camera it becomes a video for YouTube, for me personally. YouTube is my strongest platform. We can strip the audio track and upload it as a podcast. So now you've got three pieces of content from one. But we can break it down even further. Each social media network expects slightly different types of content. For example, Instagram lets you upload minute long clips to your main feed. So you can turn a longer video into micro content. Or take stills. Or even quotes from your blog post. And turn it into a motivational image. No matter what type of content you're using. You always have a call to action. You ask them to do something. Sign up to your email list. Buy a product. Whatever. But it needs to happen. So eventually all roads lead to a conversion of some sorts. Wow this is so useful thank you for the tips. In your opinion. Is selling branded clothing wise? For example, if your website is called Fanboys, would it be a wise decision to sell shirts and hats with this branded on them? Can you make decent money this way? If people are willing to buy? This is really informative and inspirational. Thank you. What's your advice on finding an itch? You know when you're hanging out with friends and family. And you turn the conversation towards a topic. And it's something you could talk about for hours. That's probably your niche. Next you'll have to validate it. 
So if you see the following on a consistent basis, you'll know it's likely to be profitable. 1. Check relevant ads are being run on the Google SCRPs. 2. Check relevant ads are being run on Facebook. 3. Check relevant products are being sold on Amazon. If you're seeing ads then someone is paying for those. And if they're consistent then they're making a return. Great advice. Good point too. What you're interested in and talk about it a lot is your niche basically. Where is some free sources to learn SEO? This might help you. I made this tutorial recently. SEO tutorial for beginners, how to learn SEO and rank higher in 2020. Create content. For me this takes ages for one post. Any hints tips tricks on doing posts quick and easy I was blogging years ago but stopped. Back then to buy written content was cheap. Now people want 10 cents or more a word. Meaning 100 to 200 for. Yep. You can curate other people's content if you want to. One way could be to list the top 10 ways to X. And you take a paragraph of text from 10 different articles on that subject. And combine them together into one article. However, you do need to write an original introduction, and it helps if you write an original paragraph for each one you've curated. It's also important to wrap each curated paragraph in block quotes and link to the source. Thanks. Google still see that as a whole new piece of info. Not a plagiarized article. Google officially states it doesn't recognize duplicate content. So they say. However you and I both know that's not strictly true. What is true? Is how Google looks at the intent of content. Because it's not an exact copy. There are no issues. The information might be the same but the format has changed. Thanks for sharing. Thanks a lot for this post. It's very nice to get real hindsight from someone with experience from the ground to advance in this kind of things. Books are usually know you're doing it wrong. Leap to step 50. Very rich and valuable content. Thank you for sharing all those tips and tricks with the community. I'll definitely have a look at your YouTube channel for more. Can you explain the steps for automation? Thanks for sharing. I would have missed many tips without your post. What website do you suggest for hosting? SiteGround.